What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. Sports Channel, where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. What's going on, Eagles Nation? Once again, Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. Listen, guys, it's the first time that you've made your way to my channel, or maybe you watched a couple of videos and you've gotten a feel for me. I can ask you guys to do a huge, huge favor for me. You guys go ahead and look to your right. You will see a subscribe button. If you guys can just hit that subscribe button, guys, you have no clue how much that helps the channel like this out. Also, if you are one of my OGs, you already know what I'm going to ask you for, guys. Hit that like button. That like button is what communicates with YouTube and the platform to let it know to push our content out across the platform to other people. All right, y'all. I don't want to spend too much time on my ask. I want to get into the matchup. We have playoff football, ladies and gentlemen. And with playoff football comes my breakdown of film. This is what I will say, guys. If you were to ask me, how do you beat Seattle? What is your key, Steve? Give us one huge key to victory today. What's that key to victory? Simply put, guys, we must win the battle at the line of scrimmage. All right, y'all. Let's dive into today's topic. Today, we're looking at the defensive side of the football and winning the line of scrimmage. Roll the film. On third down. It's coming. Wilson is dropped. All right, guys. We got the matchup that most of us asked for. As a matter of fact, I was asked, I believe it was during a live stream, I was asked straightforward, who would you rather play? And I said, I'm confident the Eagles could beat the 49ers and they could beat the Seahawks. But given my choice, I'll take the Seahawks. And let me get into why. My number one key to victory here. We've got to control. We've got to control the line of scrimmage, both offensive and defensively. So today, let's hone in on the defense. Here's the thing. The Seahawks have had a series of very unfortunate injuries. Now, they are fortunate enough that, from what I can remember, they're not necessarily like on an entire side of their line, but they are going without their starting center right now. And I believe they've had a little issue at right guard this season as well. And on top of that, now, there is talk that uh, Dwayne Brown, their left tackle, he's kind of iffy for this football game. Look, our big guys, our talented, you know, heavily paid defensive line guys, simply put, it must win its matchup this week. That's a key to me. And I will say this, Jim Schwartz is pretty good about matching things up and, and winning at that defensive line. He's good at winning at the line of scrimmage. And the first time the Eagles and the Seahawks squared off, we got to we got to Russell Wilson six times. That's a pretty good stat. We forced a fumble, and we got a pick. We had a good defensive performance, probably the best of the season. So let's really dive into what's going on here with, with these defensive matchups. On a pivotal third down during the first drive of the football game, the pressure gets home. Pivotal third down play, guys. The Eagles come out in what is known as a diamond front. Okay, pretty simple. This is where you put five guys up on the line of scrimmage. Could be five defensive linemen, could be three or four D linemen and a linebacker, safety, whatever. Your the point of a diamond front is to commit each and every one of those players to blocking somebody. Okay, what you want to do is get the the Seahawks in turn to match up with each offensive lineman on one of those players on the line of scrimmage. If you can do that, then basically what you're doing is is you're putting your best player on a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Who's our best player on that defensive line? Fletcher Cox. Who does he match up against? The backup center. And that's the key the Eagles are looking for. And if you look closely, you'll see it. And by the way, boy oh boy, does Fletcher Cox win that matchup. This is what you call being manhandled. Prior to the Seattle game, guys, what I saw a lot on film about the Philadelphia Eagles was more of an, an over. So they would. there's two concepts when you're talking about defensive line adjustments in the 43. There's an over or there's an under. An over means if you draw a line through the center, there will be three defensive linemen towards the side of the, of the tight end. Okay, one defensive lineman on the weak side. That's an over. Okay, it's an over D-line. An under D-line is when you draw that line across the center and there's three defense linemen to the weak side, right? The side opposite of the tight end. And that would be an under formation, okay? Generally speaking, the way I saw the Eagles line up prior to this game against quarterbacks where maybe you weren't quite as concerned of them breaking the pocket, 
was more so you would go into those over under sets with those, you know, draw a line, split it up. And now basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to either force them into a slide protection or try to make them designate on what side of the line to go one on one against each of those defensive linemen. So that way you get guys like Brandon Graham and you get guys like Fletcher Cox one on one. An added bonus, guys, to playing what's called a diming technique is when you get a guy like Russell Wilson who can break containment. Now you have this really nice way of making sure you have gap containment on him. Okay. Number one, you want them to, to communicate and you want them to go into a one on one. You don't want them to slide protect, none of that. You want them to try to go one on one. If they slide protect, then you got to send. You got to send, you know, Malcolm Jenkins. You got to send a, you know, Bradham. This time, they get exactly what they want, which is they have the gap containment. There's nowhere for Russell Wilson to go. And Fletcher Cox collapses that pocket. Now, I'm going to pull the picture back up on the screen, and I want you guys to take a look at some things. Number one, your joker concept. Your joker concept is a stand-up defensive end, like a rush end, basically. In this particular formation, our joker defensive end happens to be Barnett. Now, if you move from Barnett, you'll go into the zero technique, which is Fletcher Cox. Moving from Fletcher Cox, you'll get to the three technique, which this particular down and distance, it's Brandon Graham. On this particular play, it's Brandon Graham. And then you'll get to your five technique. Your five technique in this one is Josh Sweat. This is important because this will change later in the game. This time they slide protect and Schwartz sends the house. The first example of the diamond front I showed you came from the first quarter of the football game. Now, the Eagles went to this front several times. Okay. I've heard it said, I think um, the guys at PhiladelphiaEagles.com said that they went to this front in this game seven to maybe eight times. I don't know the exact number, guys. I didn't track it like that, but I did see them quite often in the diamond front. So each time they're checking, you know, the offensive line is checking with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, you know, finally gives in and says like, hey, look, they're not, they're not sending Bradham. They're not sending Jenkins. So this time let's slide protect. Let's not give them that one-on-one -on -one matchup and let's put someone there to help out on Fletcher Cox. That was a mistake because when they slide protect, what ends up happening is, is now Bradham is a go. Bradham shoots the gap, and then that means who has to pick Bradham up because you, because you had a slide protect. That means the running back has to pick Bradham up. When J Jenkins has a heads-up play here, Jenkins sees that his responsibility and coverage is now engaged in blocking, so what does he do? He goes. He gets the green light. Okay, it's go time. So he comes flying through that gap responsibility so that now there's nowhere for Russell Wilson to go. And then, by the way, we have a looper in Brandon Graham. So this time, Brandon Graham's not playing the three technique. He's playing the five technique. The three technique this go around is Vinnie Curry. So now Brandon Graham loops around Vinnie Curry, closes off that other gap assignment. So now both of those gaps are taken away, one by Brandon Graham, one by Malcolm Jenkins. And they meet at the quarterback. It's a heads-up play. This is what we need this defense to do. We need to control this offensive line, and we need to attack Russell Wilson. Cannot be, cannot be passive with this guy. If you're passive with Russell Wilson, he will find a way to beat you. Watch number 70, slide protect right to help with Fletcher Cox. The Eagles, once again, give the Seahawks a diamond look. But there are a couple of really teeny tiny adjustments that even I missed the first time I said it, guys. But Overall, there's just a couple of teeny adjustments the Eagles make that make this one just slightly different from the first time they used it in the first quarter that I showed you. This time, the number one thing you can see is look at where Brandon Graham is lined up. I incorrectly called it a five technique. That's clearly a wide nine. He's outside of the tight end. That's, that's a wide nine. So what you end up having here is you have a joker positioning, right? You got Barnett in the joker positioning to the defensive right. On the zero technique, you have Fletcher Cox. At the three technique, you have Vinnie Curry, and in the wide nine, you have Brandon Graham. All right, Brandon Graham is going to loop back around into that gap responsibility. So he takes away one gap for one area where Russell Wilson could step up and try to elude the, the pass rush. Now, the important part is, is that number 70 taps it, you know, he taps his hip, looks back at, you know, he looks back at Russell Wilson to basically say, hey, do you want me to slide protect? Wilson says yes. He slide protects and doubles Fletcher Cox this time. So Fletcher Cox can't drive the center back in his lap. 
Unfortunately, that means that, you know, um, what was his name? Uh, Penny, Brashad Penny can't, he's got to now step up and fill that, that vacant hole. So Brashad Penny steps up and he's got to go one-on-one -on -one with Nigel Bradham. Well, obviously, as you can see in this film, guys, Malcolm Jenkins sees that and he shoots the other gap. There's nowhere for Russell Wilson to get away from. And by the way, there are two defenders closing in on you. Nothing you can do, man. Brilliant play designed by Jim Schwartz. It was a hell of a hell of a play. They're playing better. Their offense could really give you fits. Third and long, and it's another set. Outside of the diamond front, I saw one more play on film that really popped off to me. It really popped out, stood out, if you will. And it was a play to where Malcolm Jenkins is reading Russell Wilson's eyes. And he knows Russell Wilson wants to drop the ball off in the flat to, it looks like Penny. I believe it was Brashard Penny running out of the backfield. The problem is Russell Wilson doesn't hold Malcolm Jenkins on Penny. He diverts his attention way too soon and goes through the next route progression without holding Jenkins. Bad, bad mistake. And try and keep the football away from Russell Wilson. Wilson in pressure and he's dropped. Oh. This was an unbelievable game for Malcolm Jenkins. I don't know if it was his best game of the season, but it's arguably the best game of the season because. Man, he was in on a lot of plays, guys. I mean, he really, really was reading Russell Wilson very, very well. And I got to tell you, with as beat up as this offensive line is for the Seahawks and as talented as our defensive line is, if a guy like Malcolm Jenkins can start identifying and spotting things about this very – and I'm sorry, Russell Wilson is a spectacular player, but I'm here to tell you, this, this Pete Carroll offense – is very vanilla. It's a very vanilla offense. It doesn't adapt and change a whole lot. And you know what? If you get a guy like Malcolm Jenkins who's noticing tendencies you have and you're not adjusting, it's gonna be he he's gonna to come to play on you. He's gonna play very, very well. And by the way, that wasn't the only play he made in this game. I'm gonna roll another clip. Wilson got a lot of time this time. Now late pressure and Malcolm Jenkins. I think the intent of this game will be really simple. The Seattle Seahawks are going to do everything they can do to try to find a way of giving Russell Wilson just a second longer to go through his reads and get downfield. The Eagles, in a return, need to do everything they can to not allow this to happen. This is going to be a battle at the line of scrimmage because what the Eagles don't want is their secondary in very, very you know, game-altering situations. You want to limit how much we need to depend upon our secondary. In order to do that, you've got to win the line of scrimmage. You've got to get home with pressure. And you know what? You've got to attack Russell Wilson. You can't let this kid sit back there. He will pick you apart if you let him sit back there. The kid can't throw through windows. Like, you got to get the pressure home. All right, y'all, that's my content for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, look, man, I think defensively, there's a lot to be excited about, guys. We know that we can beat this offensive line. Now, it'd be interesting to see what the Seahawks do in return. Are they going to max protect? You know, how much are how much of the running game are they going to go to to try to slow down the Eagles run? Or I'm sorry, the Eagles rush. Screens, tight end screens, running back screens, wide receiver screens even, although I don't think their wide receivers are really built for that. But still, it'll be interesting. You know, Will they adapt and, and run a, you know, a, a very much a New Orleans style defense against the, or offense against the Eagles to where you go up tempo, hurry up like the Eagles like to do, essentially. New Orleans likes to do it. That's a way of counteracting a team that's getting pressure on you very quickly. And it's going to be an interesting matchup to see how they match up to us at that line of scrimmage. Because both teams, I thought, had the clear advantage last time, the last time around. The Eagles did what they wanted to do against the Seattle offensive line. And unfortunately for the Eagles, the Seattle Seahawks defensive line did whatever it wanted to do against the Eagles offensive line the last matchup. Someone, you know, someone's will has got to give here. Who do we trust more? Which offensive line do we trust more to get this under control? And what defensive line do we trust to keep bringing it? Me, I'm going with the Eagles, not just because I'm an Eagles fan. I, I just feel that we do have the better, the more talented defensive line and the much more talented offensive line, even with our right side possibly not playing. I'd still take what the Eagles are throwing out there over the Seahawks at this point. 
All right, y'all. That's not to take anything away from the Seahawks. It's a good football team. All right, y'all. I'm about to jump out of here, man. I hope you guys, you know, like the content. If you did, leave me a like. You know what to do, guys. Subscribe if you're if you're new to the channel. And oh yeah, we need to close this video off, so we got to do a little something like E A D L E S. Let's go, Eagles, baby. Playoff football, guys.